Welcome to my channel, subscribe or dale like if you like. Today we will explain the active ingredient pembrolizumab, Keytruda, what is pembrolizumab, side effects, dosage, contraindications, warnings, mechanism of action, pregnancy, breastfeeding and more. What is pembrolizumab? Pembrolizumab is a medicine used in the treatment of melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, urothelial carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. The trade name of pembrolizumab is Keytruda. Mode of administration of pembrolizumab. It should be administered by intravenous infusion for 30 minutes. Mechanism of action of pembrolizumab. Antibody which binds to the PD-1 receptor and blocks its interaction with the PD-L1 and PD-L2 ligands. The PD-1 receptor is a negative regulator of T-cell activity involved in controlling T-cell immune responses. Pembrolizumab enhances T-cell responses, including anti-tumor responses, by blocking PD-1, bound to PD-L1 and PD-L2, which are expressed on antigen-presenting cells and can be expressed by tumors or other cells in the tumor microenvironment. Contraindications of Pembrolizumab Hypersensitivity to Pembrolizumab Interactions with Pembrolizumab No formal drug-drug interaction studies have been conducted with Pembrolizumab. Since Pembrolizumab is eliminated from circulation by catabolism, no metabolic drug interactions are expected. Pregnancy and Pembrolizumab IG-4 is known to cross the placental barrier and Pembrolizumab is an IG-4. Therefore, it has the potential to be transmitted from the mother to the developing fetus. It should not be used during pregnancy unless the woman's clinical condition requires treatment with Pembrolizumab. Breastfeeding and Pembrolizumab It is not known if Pembrolizumab is excreted in breast milk. Since it is known that antibodies can be excreted in breast milk, the risk in newborns cannot be excluded. A decision should be made whether to stop breastfeeding or to discontinue treatment with pembrolizumab, after considering the benefit of breastfeeding for the child and the benefit of pembrolizumab treatment for the mother. Effects on the driving ability of pembrolizumab Pembrolizumab may have a small influence on the ability to drive and use machines. Fatigue has been reported after administration of pembrolizumab. What is pembrolizumab used for? The therapeutic indications of pembrolizumab are In monotherapy Treatment of advanced melanoma, unresectable or metastatic, in adults Adjuvant treatment in adults with stage 3 melanoma and lymph node involvement who have undergone complete resection First-line treatment of metastatic non-small cell lung cancer and SCLC, in adults whose tumors express PDL1 with a tumor marker ratio greater than 50% with no further tumor mutations of EGFR or ALK. Treatment of locally advanced or metastatic non small cell lung cancer in adults whose tumors express PDL1 with a TPS greater than or equal to 1% and who have received at least one prior course of chemotherapy. Patients with EGFR or ALK positive tumor mutations should also have received targeted therapy prior to receiving pembrolizumab. Treatment of adults with relapsed or refractory classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, CLH, who have not responded to autologous hematopoietic stem cell, HPS, transplantation and brintuximab vedatine, BV, or who are not transplant candidates and have not responded to BV. Treatment of locally advanced or metastatic urothelial carcinoma in ads, who have received previous platinum based chemotherapy. Treatment of locally advanced or metastatic urothelial carcinoma in ads, who are not candidates for cisplatin based chemotherapy and whose tumors express PDL1 with a positive combined score greater than or equal to 10. Treatment of recurrent or metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, SCCH, in ads whose tumors express PDL1 with a TPS greater than or equal to 50% and which progress during or after platinum-based chemotherapy. In combination In combination with pemetrexate and platinum-based chemotherapy is indicated for first-line non-squamous metastatic NSCLC in ads 
whose tumors do not have positive EGFR or ALK tumor mutations in combination with carboplatin and paclitaxel or NAB paclitaxel. It is indicated for first-line treatment of metastatic squamous NSCLC in adults. In combination with axitinib, it is indicated for first-line treatment of advanced renal cell carcinoma, RCC, in adults. In monotherapy or in combination. In monotherapy or in combination with platinum-based chemotherapy and 5-fluoroacyl, 5-FU. It is indicated for the first-line treatment of metastatic or recurrent unresectable squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, SCCC, in adults whose tumors express PDL1 with a SPC greater than or equal to 1. Pembrolizumab pathology. Adult 4. Patients with NSCLC or previously untreated urothelial carcinoma should be selected according to tumor expression of PDL1 confirmed by a validated DO test. Recommended dose in monotherapy, 200 mg every 3 weeks or 400 mg every 6 weeks, in 4 perfusion for 30 minutes. Recommended dose as part of a combination treatment, 200 mg every 3 weeks, in 4 infusion for 30 minutes. Continue until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. For the adjuvant treatment of melanoma, it should be administered until relapse of the disease unacceptable toxicity or a treatment duration of up to one year. Temporary suspension of the dose or definitive suspension of the treatment. Grade 2 pneumonitis, suspend temporarily. Grade 3 or 4 or recurrent grade 2 pneumonitis, stop definitively. Grade 2 or 3 colitis, stop temporarily. Grade 4 or recurrent grade 3 colitis, stop definitively. Grade 2 nephritis with creatinine greater than 1.5 to less than or equal to 3 times LSN, stop temporarily. Grade 3 nephritis greater than or equal to 3 with creatinine greater than or equal to 3 times LSN, stop definitively. Adrenal insufficiency, stop temporarily. Symptomatic hypophysitis, stop temporarily. Type 1 diabetes associated with grade 3 hyperglycemia or associated with ketoacidosis, evaluate continuing pembrolizumab treatment after progressive reduction of corticosteroids, if necessary, in patients with grade 3 or grade 4 endocrinopathy that improves to grade 2 or less and is controlled with hormone replacement therapy, if indicated, otherwise, discontinue permanently. Grade 3 hyperthyroidism Control hypothyroidism with hormone replacement therapy without stopping treatment. Hepatitis with AST or ALT greater than 3 to 5 times the LSN or total bilirubin greater than 1.5 to 3 times the LSN, grade 2 stop temporarily. Hepatitis with EAST or ALT greater than 5 times the LSN or total bilirubin greater than 3 times the LSN, grade 3, stop definitively. In case of basal state liver and metastasis with elevation of grade 2 of AST or ALT, hepatitis with elevated AST or ALT greater or equal to 50% and this lasts more than one week, stop definitively. Grade 3 skin reactions or suspected Stevens-Johnson syndrome, SSJ, or toxic epidermal necrolysis, TEN, stop temporarily. Grade 4 skin reactions or confirmation of SJS or NET. Stop definitively. Grade 2 or grade 3 immune system related adverse reactions, stop temporarily. Grade 3 or 4 myocarditis, stop definitively. Grade 3 or 4 encephalitis, stop definitively. Grade 3 or 4 Guillain Barre syndrome, stop definitively. Grade 4 or recurrent grade 3 immune system related adverse reactions. Stop definitively. Grade 3 or 4 perfusion related adverse reactions. Stop definitively. Until adverse reaction recovers to grade 0 to 1. If treatment related toxicity does not recover to grade 0 to 1 within 12 weeks after the last dose or if the corticosteroid dose cannot be reduced to 10 mg of prednisone or equivalent per day within 12 weeks, pembrolizumab should be discontinued permanently. The safety of restarting treatment with pembrolizumab in patients who have previously experienced immune-related myocarditis is not known. 
in LHC pembrolizumab should be temporarily discontinued for grade 4 hematologic toxicity until adverse reactions recover to grade 0 to 1. Pembrolizumab warnings and precautions. Ocular melanoma data are limited, no data available for children under 18. Adverse reactions related to the immune system, pneumonitis, colitis, hepatitis, nephritis, endocrinopathies, other adverse reactions such as uveitis, arthritis, myositis, pancreatitis, severe skin reactions, S, myasthenic, optic neuritis, rhabdomyolysis, hemolytic anemia, and partial seizures arising in a patient with an inflammatory focus in the parenchymal brain. According to the severity of the adverse reaction, pembrolizumab should be temporarily suspended and corticosteroids administered. Suspend definitively for any recurrent grade 3 immune system related adverse reaction and for toxicity of any grade 4 immune system related adverse reaction. Due to their possible interference with their pharmacodynamic activity and efficacy, avoid the use of systemic corticosteroids or immunosuppressants before starting treatment. Once treatment has begun, use systemic corticosteroids or other immunosuppressants to treat adverse reactions related to the immune system. In transplant recipients treated with PD-1 inhibitors, pembrolizumab may increase the risk of rejection in solid organ transplant recipients. Consider the benefit of pembrolizumab therapy versus the risk of possible organ rejection. Perfusion-associated reactions Complications of allogeneic hematopoietic progenitor transplantation, HPT, in classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, graft versus host disease and hepatic venoocclusive disease have been observed in patients undergoing allogeneic HPT after previous exposure to pembrolizumab. In urotereal carcinoma with previous platinum-based chemotherapy, the delay in the onset of pembrolizumab's effect should be assessed before starting treatment in patients with poorer prognostic characteristics and or regressive disease. In urotereal carcinoma that are not candidates for cisplatin, pembrolizumab should be used with caution in weakened patients, for example a COG-3 functional status, after individual risk-benefit assessment. INCO, in combination with chemotherapy for first-line treatment of NSCLC, the frequency of adverse reactions observed with pembrolizumab in combination is higher than with pembrolizumab in monotherapy or chemotherapy alone. In the adjuvant treatment of adults with melanoma, there has been a trend towards an increased frequency of serious adverse reactions in patients over 75 years of age. Safety data of pembrolizumab in the adjuvant setting of melanoma in patients over 75 years are limited. A direct comparison of the safety of pembrolizumab when used in combination with pemetrexid and platinum-based chemotherapy versus pembrolizumab in monotherapy is not available.